so good morning good afternoon to everyone because i don't know at what time my lecture will be scheduled for you people myself dr vanna jain from department of radiation oncology rural medical college loni and this is first time oncology lectures has been put for the bachelor students of the physiotherapy college i hope this introductory five lectures will give you an overview about the cancer and today's topic for my lecture is introduction to cancer so i will be giving you an overview about the various types of cancers which are diagnosed treated and taken care in the department of radiation oncology so we will be with the first lecture if we see cell is the basic unit of biology and you all know about the cell so this is the cell with the cell membrane cytoplasm nucleus golgi apparatus mitochondria and other structures in human body or in an adult human body there are around 50 to 100 trillion cells of about 200 specialized forms these different specialized forms of cells they together make the tissue so a specific tissue is made up of different type of cells in this the basic uh, cells are there for that particular tissue and the supporting cells are there then there is a blood supply lymphatics are there so these are the different types of cells and this is the histopathological picture of a tissue so as you know that the human body is made up of trillions of cells so these cells together they make the tissues and the different type of tissues together they make different organs and different organs together they make the organ system so different organ systems which are there so this is the human body the completely covered with a skin then next comes the muscular system below the beneath the skin so from top to bottom here you can say head and neck muscles then the upper limb muscles thorax abdomen and the lower limb muscles so all these muscular system then comes the skeletal system over which all these muscles they are attached so there are 206 bones in the human body so top to bottom you can see here the bones are there then the cardiovascular system so heart is there in the center in the thorax and then the arteries are there to supply the blood and the venous drainage again back to the heart the blood goes then the central nervous system so here you can see the brain and then the spinal cord and the, the various nerves which are coming out through the spinal cord so the nerves nerve supplies there from brain till the end of the body tissue then there are other different systems are there beneath this so this there are respiratory system with the two lungs on both the sides then inside the abdomen hepatobiliary system is there excretory system with the kidney and urinary bladder complete gastrointestinal system from mouth till anus then the genito urinary system so there are all these systems they are present inside the human body which is made up of trillions of cells of around 200 different specialized forms but one thing which is to be remembered all the cells they divide so this dividing cells then the specialized cells then this they proliferate also so if they are proliferating they divide specialized cells they divide and they proliferate 
so they die also so suppose there are 100 cells and they divide and they become 200 so 100 has to die then only the balance is maintained so all these cells which have the capacity to divide they follow the instructions which are encoded into their dna and they become the magnificently coordinated multicellular colony that is the human organism so one basic thing which is to be understood by all of you that human body is made up of different organs and organ systems but all of them they work together in a very coordinated manner here we see the normal cell cycle normal means normal so g0 means the resting phase here the cell is in resting phase this is not dividing then the cell enters into the cell division phase so that is the normal cell activity means this will go into that cycle of division so once the cell enters into that cycle then the next process is synthesis in that the cell will accumulate the energy for the cell division and there are uh, changes in the cell then again a resting phase is there g2 that is the pre mitotic synthesis of proteins for cellular division so here the chromosomes they become double and the cell size cells size will also increase and cell is ready to divide into two then comes the mitosis means the cell division so in this the one cell will become two so this is one cell and this is the other cell so quite this will happen that this cell will enter into the again cell division cycle and this cell might go into the resting phase or this will also divide so that way the cell cycle goes so each kind of cell have its own life cycle that is called the cell cycle so again the word kind of cell that is the type of cell they grow divide and die replaced by the new cells so there are few cells in the body which do not divide they are importantly the heart muscles you will never hurt the cancer of the heart then the nerve cells they, these are the neurons they never divide so you will never listen the cancer of the nerve cells then there are cells which grow very slowly it means their resting phase is for longer time so these are the liver cells then there are cells which grow very fast means the multiplication rate is very fast so if you will imagine where you will require fast growing cells because if there is constant damage then we require fast multiplication also so where if you will imagine what are the structures in the body where we require higher multiplication of the cells these are the mucosal skin and the marrow because all these cells the damage is to the tissue is very high so mucosal because they are mucosal cells they are constantly exposed to the trauma same is with the skin again constantly exposed to the trauma that is the environmental trauma or the other trauma then the marrow cells again the cells they are marrow cells are used regularly and they flow in the blood so again they have to be replaced constantly so after the normal cell cycle here we will see the typical phases of cancer development so healthy normal cells which are present in various tissues and organs of the body they multiply in a very controlled manner and they die also 
but if there is constant insult to those these normal cells in the form of various chemical carcinogens chronic infection and radiation exposure these healthy normal cells they may change into dysplastic cells so if the insult to this normal cells continues for long time this dysplasia will turn into carcinoma in situ but here up to dysplasia if the insult is withdrawn these dysplastic cells will change into normal healthy cells once the cell is turned into the carcinoma then at this stage the carcinoma is under control this can be well controlled by various treatment measures but if the insult to the cell this continues then this carcinoma will carcinoma in situ will change into localized invasive which is very important word invasive cancer so whenever the word localized invasive cancer comes it means the cancer has developed to that stage that this can invade the surrounding normal tissues so this localized invasive cancer again this can be controlled very well but if this will there is no treatment is given then this will spread to the regional lymph nodes so these are the lymph nodes through the lymphatics these lymph nodes they are studied with the malignant cells and the cells will start growing there multiply there and the lymph node size will increase next comes the distant metastasis from this localized invasive cancer the cells through the blood they spread to the distant organs so suppose there is a case of localized carcinoma tongue so lesion is very well localized to the tongue only but next stage there is lymph node involvement so some mandibular lymph node enlargement is there the same patient when we go for the diagnostic investigations that time one can see that there are multiple lesions in the lung so this is the distant metastasis to the lung so the patient has gone into stage 4 so that is the distant metastasis so this is interesting to know what triggers changes in cells because the normal healthy cells which are dividing in a very controlled manner so why there is trigger so there are so many risk factors which are there and they trigger the cells to multiply in a uncontrolled manner so the importantly chronic insult to cells and tissue in the form of chemical carcinogens so whenever the word comes chemical carcinogens just think of what could be the th uh, first thing which will come to your mind that is the cigarette or the bd smoking because so many chemicals they are inhaled by an individual next is the smokeless tobacco which is used in various forms so raw tobacco gutka pan supari so many things they are used and they work as a chemical carcinogens locally next is the alcohol so all those things they have addiction liability and they work as a chemical carcinogens if the patient takes this for long time there are other chemical carcinogens also for which an individual is exposed because they are present in the nature as a by product of the various factories or the person is uh, uh, exposed to those chemicals because of the occupation so these are the because of the exposure of an individual to those chemicals as an occupational hazard next comes the diet exercise and overweight 
so the diet is all usually linked with the overweight if an individual has healthy diet and they exercise normally and the weight is within the limits so, so many malignancies or the cancers can be prevented next comes the exposure to radiation so that is a physical carcinogens there there is radiation in the nature and so so many skin cancers they are related to this natural radiation exposure next comes the chronic infection so the insult to the tissue because of the chronic infection of this is the bacterial infection viral infection or parasitic infection this can lead to changes in the cell and this will turn into cancer so just think of chronic infection at the cervix or at the penile region because of the poor genital hygiene which leads to cancer cervix and cancer of penis some of the cancers they are related with the genetic and hereditary uh, exposure so that is inherited genetic mutations are there which are transfer tra transferred to the next generation some of the cancers one cannot enumerate the risk factor or the causes so this is the idiopathic one cannot say what is the cause for that cancer so here in this slide you can very well see the changes in the cell so the development of normal cells into malignant cells so you can see the normal cell line which is present here and the normal cells they are well organized their size and shape is well maintained and the nucleus is also in the same size but here if you will see the size is different the nucleus size is also different and the number is also more and the overall size of this area where the malignant changes has been started so this is more so there is a slight bulge here which can be seen so the tumor formation has been started to this area and this is the histopathological view one can see the changes in the tissue so here see what is cancer so genes they mutate and they miscode so there is miscoding in the genes then the cells they gone bad and they multiply rapidly so because of this rapid multiplication there is formation of tumors so those these tumors could be the benign tumors which is non cancerous and the malignant tumors which is cancerous so here you can see the multiple bulges because the cells they multiply in a different manner and here you can see the property the typical property of cancer invasion so this is the tumor but this has invaded to the surrounding normal tissue so here how one can define the cancer so what is cancer or malignancy so cancer is the term which is used generically for more than 100 different diseases including malignant tumors of different sites cancer is due to the failure of mechanisms that regulate normal cell growth proliferation and cell death so importantly normal cell growth then the regulation of normal cell growth then the proliferation they proliferate irregularly and then the cell death cycle this is also disturbed and this results in progression of tumor for, from mild to severe abnormality with invasion of neighboring tissues and eventually spread to the other areas of the body
so up to this you will be knowing that all the cells of the body which has capacity to multiply can turn into malignant cells so from top to bottom you can have cancer of different sites different organs and different epithelial tissues so how we will classify the cancers so number 1 is by their primary site of origin like wherever the cancer is there like carcinoma tongue carcinoma cervix so that is the organ or the area where the cancer has occurred next comes the histopathological classification so here is the tissue type so we because there is broad histopathological classification which is very important for the treatment purpose so here we have to we have to divide the cancer be based on the histopathological type next comes the in the same histopathological type there are grading and then comes the stage classification so the tumor size the lymph node size and the spread to the distant organs so based on that the staging is there and then to, uh, cancer is classified so here the classification of cancer based on the different histopathological groups so this is the broad classification in which the, the cancer is divided into five groups so one the first one is the carcinoma which is of different cell linings of the internal as well as the external parts of the body so here comes the lung breast colon and the skin next is the sarcoma which is of the bones cartilage fat connective tissue muscle and other supporting tissue so sarcoma is of the supporting tissues then the myeloma this is the plasma cell cancer then the lymphoma that is of the lymph nodes or the lymphatic system then the leukemias these are the liquid malignancies or the blood cancer then the adenomas these are the cancers which arise in the thyroid pituitary glands adrenal and other glandular structures so carcinomas so just think of the cell linings where the carcinoma can occur so all the because this is the malignant neoplasm of epithelial origin so think of the epithelium which is present epithelium is present all over the body so the epithelium which is there or the skin is there then the total gastrointestinal system is there then the respiratory system is there where the uh, organs they are covered with the epithelium so this is the internal and the external lining of the body so this epithelial malignancies this is divided into two so if this is in the glandular structure so that is the adenocarcinoma so where the adenocarcinoma will develop in an organ or the gland where the mucous membrane is there okay so just think of the organs where the glandular structures are there so colon is there then the prostate is there then the bladder is there next is the squamous cell carcinoma so adenocarcinoma and the squamous cell carcinoma so squamous epithelium this is present where the skin then the oropharyngeal region then the respiratory tract so all those epithelium this the changes will be in the form of squamous carcinoma so 
here just think of uh, other squamous areas like esophagus and in the female genital tract etc so there is a lot many things where the squamous cell carcinoma can develop so here in this slide i have put some pictures for better understanding so the first picture is of a lesion a small lesion of around 1.5 cm over the left lateral border of the tongue this is a ulcerative lesion because there is you can see a slough covered ulcer which is present ulcerative lesion over the tongue so the probability of malignant ulcer but then just think of the type so the the cell lining which is covering the tongue that is the squamous epithelium so the chances of squamous cell carcinoma over the tongue so that is the tongue lesion and then histopathological conformation is required here in the second picture you will see there is a small lesion over the nose then again there is a plaque or then there is a elevation over the skin surface here again the elevation with the redness here you can see the elevation with the borders which are more elevated so all those lesions are present over the skin so this is the epithelial this could be the epithelial malignancy so this can be the squamous cell or the basal cell carcinoma or baso squamous also that is the different types of histopathological types of skin malignancy here in third picture you can see there is lesion in the esophageal lumen that is in the middle esophagus so because of this lesion the lumen is irregular because this has uh, taken the uh, growth is there inside the lumen and then in the barium swallow there is irregularity in the mucosal margin then if you will think of the mucosal margin which is covering the uh, esophagus in this region the commonly this is the squamous cell so squamous cells then this could be the squamous cell carcinoma chances are there so esophageal lesion here here in this respiratory tract you will see the lesion which is present at the end of the bronchus so this could be if this is in the squamous epithelium squamous cell carcinoma or if this is in the glandular cells then this could be adenocarcinoma so the different lesion with the different carcinoma probability here again you can see the lesion at the cervix so think of the epithelial lining which is covering the cervix so outside here the probability of squamous cell carcinoma is more and if we will go at the junction uh, above the junction inside the uh, cervical canal the chances of adenocarcinoma increases so this is the carcinoma cervix probability of both squamous cell carcinoma or adenocarcinoma part of the lower part of the uterus is also involved with the growth here you will see there is lesion in the breast this could be intraductal carcinoma which is the commonest so intraductal carcinoma of breast or this could be lobular carcinoma if this has arise in the lobules of the breast next in the classification of cancer is the sarcoma so sarcoma refers to the cancer that originates in supportive and connective tissues such as bones tendons cartilage muscle and fat so all these tissues they are supportive or connective tissues of the main cell linings generally occurring in young adults the most common sarcoma often develops as a painful mass on the bone so to enumerate various sarcomas 
they are the osteosarcomas which is originating in the bone chondrosarcoma in the cartilage leiomyosarcoma in the smooth muscles rhabdomyosarcoma in the skeletal muscle mesothelial sarcoma or the mesothelioma in the membrane lining of the body cavity fibrosarcoma fibrous tissue angiosarcoma or hemangio endothelioma blood vessels liposarcoma adipose tissue glioma or astrocytoma this is in the neurogenic connective tissue in the brain mixosarcoma in the primitive embryonic connective tissue meso mesenchymous or mixed mesodermal tumors which is again in the mixed connective tissue types so these are the different types of sarcoma which you, you will come across just to enumerate here in this slide you can very well see various sarcoma sites so if you want to see the bone so skull bones ribs long bones of the upper limb long bones of the lower limb and in the soft tissue head and neck region thorax trunk and abdomen uterus pelvis and bladder and the lower limb so think of the soft tissue they are present everywhere so you can come across of the sarcoma of different sites all over the body here in this picture the presentation how do they present so there is the swelling and the swelling this is uh, bulging this is the normal and this is the abnormal limb and here this is the picture so this is in the muscle so soft tissue of the muscle or this could be the muscle itself so fibrosarcoma or rhabdomyosarcoma this could be so next in the classification is multiple myeloma or the plasma cytoma so myelomas they are the cancer that originate in the plasma cells of the bone marrow so think of the bone and the bone marrow so where you can see the where the plasma cells they rest and they produce some of the proteins they are the antibodies which is present in the blood so this is in relation with the immunity of the person so here you can see the bone and the bone marrow and then the plasma normal plasma cells which produce the antibodies in a very controlled manner but here lower you can see the multiple myeloma cells where the un, uh, the plasma cells they multiply themselves and then the production of antibodies this is in a very uncontrolled manner then the symptoms and all this will be accordingly of the multiple myeloma so multiple bones involvement are is there and then the production of plasma cells and then the production of antibodies so symptoms will be accordingly but if this plasma cell multiplication is limited to only one bone so then this is called the plasma cytoma so this has not spread to the generalized uh, uh, bone marrow and uh, here in the picture you can see only one bone is involved that is the left upper limb or the humerus the lower end of the humerus so here in this slide next in the classification cancer classification is the lymphoma so lymphomas they develop in the glands or the nodes of the lymphatic system a network of vessels nodes and the organs specifically the spleen tonsils and thymus that purify bodily fluids and produce infection fighting white blood cells or the lymphocytes so here just you understand what does the lymphatic system do so the lymphatics they collect the fluid from all over the body that is from the periphery to the center so from all peripheral sites so the think of all mucosal lining or all surface lining 
so from that side if there uh, the body has come across with any antigen which is new for the body so that antigen is drained antigen could be in the form of any bacteria virus or fungi or anything maybe chemical so that antigen which is which has come which has entered inside the body that is taken care by the lymph node first this is drained through the lymphatics and then this is taken care in the lymph nodes so if that antigen is new to the body so here that antigen is taken care by the lymphocytes which are present inside the <coughs> body so unlike the leukemias which are sometimes called liquid cancers lymphomas are the solid cancers so the same way as the antigens they are taken care by the lymph nodes if the malignant cells they are drained through the lymphatics and then they rest or they are they come across at the lymph node level then what will happen the lymph node will try to stop that malignant cells to the first lymph node station itself and at that side when the lymph node that try to stop the malignant cells but the malignant cells they are very smart they will start dividing at the lymph node itself but the lymph node they try their best to stop the malignant cells multiplication to their level but think of the lymphocytes if they which are present in the lymph nodes if they start dividing inside the lymph node then what will happen <coughs> those lymphocytes they will form the lymphomas so the lymphomas may occur in the specific organs such as the stomach lymphoma of the stomach breast or the brain these lymphomas are referred to as the extra nodal lymphomas or the lymphomas which are present in the lymph node itself they are the categorized into two categories they are the hodgkins lymphoma and non hodgkins lymphoma these are the two basic categories of the lymphoma in hodgkins lymphoma you will see the rs cells or the reed sternberg cells and in non hodgkins lymphoma again there are different so many classifications so the basic idea is that the lymphomas they are the malignancy of the lymphatic system here in this slide the lymphatic system is very well represented so here you will see the lymphatics which are from the toe to the popliteal fossa region the lymph node station and then the next lymph node station which is in the inguinal region then the parietic region and then this will drain finally the into the heart so all those uh, lymph which is drained from the periphery all over the body so again the upper limb then the head and neck region then the intestine and all everywhere this is drained and but at all stations purification is done so all the antigens they are taken care and finally the pure fluid or the lymph this is mixed to the blood and then the extra lymphatic organs in this the liver is there spleen is there and the thymus but if these lymph nodes or the lymphocytes which are present in the lymph nodes they start dividing in an uncontrolled manner so what will happen there you will see the enlarged lymph nodes which is present from one side so suppose the lymph node of the cervical region this starts growing so you will see such type of picture the enlarged lymph node which is present over the right side of the neck and this could be the multiple lymph nodes or this could be one single lymph node which has enlarged and this has given the bulge over the neck so the possibility you will think of one possibility is like there could be some lesion in the oral cavity or in the oropharyngeal region so that is the primary malignancy which is present over the uh, 
uh, oral cavity region or the oropharyngeal region and this has metastasized to the lymph node in the neck region. So the tissue type will tell you whether this is the primary somewhere here or this is the primary of the lymph node only. So the biopsy of this lymph node will tell you about the this is the metastatic squamous or adenocarcinoma or this is the primary lymph node malignancy that is the lymphoma. So if this is the primary lymph node malignancy then this could be the lymphoma could be the Hodgkin's or non-Hodgkin's. So again the histopathology is very important for the final diagnosis of any malignancy. So next in the classification is leukemias. So leukemias, they are the liquid cancers or the blood cancers. They are the cancers of the bone marrow, the site of blood cell production. So because blood is the liquid tissue of the body, again the word tissue which I am telling you, this is very important. So liquid tissue of the body. So why not the malignancy can be of the liquid tissue. So that is at the site where the liquid is produced. So the blood, the various cells of the blood, they are produced in the bone marrow. So there are changes in the bone marrow which leads to uncontrolled growth of the marrow cells. So, just if you will see the definition, the word leukemia means the white blood cells in Greek. The disease is often associated with the overproduction of immature white blood cells. So, immature white blood cells. So, the if the maturity is not attained, all those cells, they are of no use to the body. These immature white blood cells do not perform as well as they should Therefore, be the patient is often prone for the infection. So, the leukemia also affects red blood cells and can cause poor blood clotting and fatigue due to the anemia. So, it depends on the cell series which is involved. So, if for the example, leukemia includes the myelogenous or the granulocytic leukemia if the granulocytic series is affected. So malignancy of the myeloid or the granulocyte white blood cell series, here this is, if this is acute, so acute myeloid leukemia, if this is chronic, so this will go into the chronic myeloid leukemia classification. Then the lymphatic or the lymphocytic or the lymphoblastic leukemia, the malignancy of the lymphoid series. Hmm. Here the lymphocytic blood cell series is involved. So here acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Because the lymphoid series is involved. Then next is the chronic lymphocytic uh, leukemia. If the red blood cell production is involved. Then this is called the polycythemia ver uh, vera or the erythremia. That is the malignancy of various blood cells products but the red cells, they are predominating here. Here in this slide, you can very well see the normal blood picture. So here you will see the normal RBCs. Here you will see the neutrophils. Here you will see the monocytes and the platelets. But if you will see the picture, blood picture of a leukemia patient, then here what you will see the leukemia cells or the white blood cells predominantly. The other normal cells and they are abnormal because the size of the nucleus is not like the normal lymphocytes. So all those abnormal white blood cells which are present in the blood picture of a leukemia patient. So this could be of the myeloid series or of the lymphoid series. Here you will see because the blood production is in the bone marrow. So bone marrow, here the long bones commonly and here 
there is uncontrolled growth of the cells so myeloid stem cell if uncontrolled growth is there the abnormal growth of myeloid blood cells if the lymphoid series lymphoid stem cell they grow abnormally then the lymphoid blood cells they are produced so if this is in the acute manner or it means in a very less time then this is the acute myeloid leukemia if this is for the lymphocytes then acute lymphoblastic or lymphoid leukemia and if this is over a long span of time then this is in the chronic series here in this slide you will see the common symptoms of leukemia but before that just think of blood what does blood do so blood if you will think of red blood cells they supply the oxygen if you will think of white blood cells then again immediately the immunity comes to your mind if you think of platelets then immediately the clotting mechanism flashes in your mind so based on the cells which are present in the blood the that particular cell series is involved and the symptoms they will be accordingly so as the blood is supplied all over the body so the symptoms they are generalized so systemic symptoms like weight loss fever and frequent infections so fever and frequent frequent infections they are directly linked with the what immunity so the white blood cell series and as the anemia is persistent then easy shortness of breath that is in the lung lung means like lung is there but this is because of the anemia then muscular weakness again because the blood cells are less and the energy is not provided then bone and joint pains this is because the bones they are weak they become weak because of the over production of white blood cells abnormal white blood cells then the psychological fatigue and the loss of appetite then lymph node swelling is there because again the malignant cells they deposit at the lymph nodes so the lymph node swelling is present in patients then splenic enlargement and the liver enlargement because again there is a cell load at the spleen level and the liver level then if just think of the platelets and then what you will see the petechi or the bleeding points at the over the skin so these are the generalized symptoms because the blood flows all over the body few cancers they they are not classified as per the classifications so they are like mixed type of tumors and the adenomas so in mixed type of tumors what will happen suppose the squamous lining is there and but the glands are also there so there will be a mixed carcinoma that is the adeno squamous carcinoma so adeno com component is also there and squamous component is also there then the mixed mesodermal tumors so in this what lipofibrosarcoma so it's like lip uh, the fat cells are also there and fibrous cells are also there then the carcinosarcoma so there is like carcinoma component is also there so epithelial component along with the mesodermal component so carcinosarcoma then the teratocarcinoma so teratoma mixed with the carcinoma so these are the mixed tumors which you will come across or you will sometimes you will listen just for the knowledge the next is the adenoma and the blastomas so oma word is used mainly for the benign tumors fibroadenoma this is the benign but for some the suffix oma is used for the malignant tumors also 
so the astrocytoma or the pituitary adenoma these are the benign tumors you will think of they are the benign tumors but they are not the benign because the growth is uncontrolled here in astrocytoma this could be of different grades but they are the malignant tumors pituitary adenoma this could be malignant or this could be benign again the seminoma that is the testicular tumor the commonest testicular tumor seminoma so oma word is there but that is the malignant testicular tumor again the teratoma again the malignant tumor so malignant teratoma this could be but teratoma oma is used but this is malignant this germinoma again the malignancy but oma is used again the this is for the ovaries this germinoma and teratoma then the chordoma again the tumor is there malignant tumor is there but the word uh, oma is suffixed then the schwannoma schwann cells tumor again this is malignant then there are some blastomas they are malignant tumors so retinoblastoma from the retina cells neuroblastoma inside the abdomen neuroblast then the nephroblastoma in the kidney etc so these are the different uh, malignancies which are uh, again not in the nomenclature or the classification but uh if you will know just by the name this is good as i already told you that the nerve cells they never divide so you will never see the malignancy of nerve cells but uh, in the central nervous system there are so many supporting cells to the nervous system so the you the you will come across with the malignancy of different supporting cells because they divide and they repair also so here and interestingly the uh, most of them they are with the omas so just to have uh, with the last slide i just want to tell you about the various omas which are there in the central nervous system so with the meningeal lining meningioma then the oligodendrocytes these are the oligodendrogliomas okay with the astrocytes astrocytomas all these are the supporting cells of the central nervous system then the supratentorial ependymomas so ependymal cells they are the lining of what they are the lining of the again the csf system so supratentorial ependymomas then the optic nerve or the optic glioma which is present here again the astrocytomas craniopharyngiomas then the pituitary tumors pituitary adenoma then the pineal region tumors then the schwannomas then the brain stem gliomas ependymoma medulloblastoma as i told you before also then the cerebellar astrocytoma so these are the central nervous system tumors thank you all of you for the patient listening and i hope i made the justice for you for this online classes just to give an overview of various malignancies because this is the introduction to various cancers but in my next lecture we'll see the diagnostic workup for various cancers as well as the various treatment modalities thank you all of you once again